Hello, everybody. The bounce continued on Thursday with stocks basically closing up, the, but the most important index that we wanted to see up did not close up. So I guess we will go ahead and start it off there. The Russell 2000 actually finished 0.20% lower. I continue to state that I want to see this index and the Dow Jones transportation average lead any rally attempt. The fact that stock indexes bounced overall today and the Russell 2000 did not join in the bounce is a you know slight concern for anyone that thinks that we've actually found a real bottom here it's hard to think that we found a real bottom here whenever the Russell 2000 support has to go all the way back to 2013 right around this area but overall you know this is a weak bounce attempt I continue to extra want to exercise caution in my own trading and I advise others to do the same but if we look at the other indexes, like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you can see good bounce today. But if you notice intraday, most of the work was done in the lower half of the range. Volume was lower than the day before, not necessarily something you want to see. Still good enough for day two of a rally attempt overall, because going getting back to the Russell 2000, it was up yesterday, signifying day one of a rally attempt. The rest of the indexes, it doesn't matter. That's technically what we're working off of. But today's an up day, but as you can see, the S&P 500, also doing most of its work in the lower end of the intraday range overall and that can be seen also in the nasdaq working most of its day in the lower half and the nasdaq 100 then the nasdaq and nasdaq 100 actually lagged compared to the bigger cap indexes with the nasdaq barely closing higher the good news on today's session was that the dow jones transportation average actually looks pretty decent had a solid day almost up one percent it was the leading index so you know that's good to see after yesterday's gain in the Russell 2000 and the leadership that it showed yesterday so you know it could be a potential you know decent bounce but still we have the overhead resistance levels of August September October we have the downtrending 50 and now downtrending uh, starting to really downtrend I should mean it's supposed to it's starting to get a little bit more you know severe moving average so all these indexes there's a lot of resistance levels for them to fight through there's no way in hell I would get too bullish on the short term now I want to switch charts here and I know it's a mess so let me clean it up a little bit I'll delete this in here and I'll delete TSV and I'll delete MACD so we can just look at RSI and we can look at stochastics and so if you look overall we're getting to oversold levels overall we're starting to hook up a little bit which is indicative of a bounce but there is no real positive divergence in either one of these indicators so it's hard to think when I see the Russell 2000 and the other indexes that there's really any reason to be very excited that this bounce attempt can turn into a full-fledged you know, uptrend. RSI slightly positive, but it, we're not really hitting new lows in the NASDAQ. We're finding support right back at the August lows. And as you can see, stochastics oversold. So that's good news. I mean, as we're oversold and we can bounce, but it doesn't mean we can have to go anywhere. You can see over here we stayed oversold for a while. Same as over here when we tried to curl up before going lower again. But overall, we're in a much different situation. We're well below the 50 and 200 day moving average. NASDAQ has a death cross. There's a lot of resistance overall, and none of our indicators are indicating you know, anything positive on the stochastics RSI side. Dow Jones Industrial Average, you can see, same similar situation. It really doesn't have a whole lot of clear momentum advantage to it. And that can just be seen across the board. We already went through Russell 2000, NASDAQ 100, and even the Dow Jones Transportation Average. There really isn't anything super bullish there. So now let me go ahead and get rid of stochastics here. Let me get rid of, this is a pocket pivot point sell signal and the RSI. We can start to look at TSV, looking at Dow Jones uh, Transportation Average. Once again, we're oversold, but there is no positive divergence in these lines. There is no clear uptrending in these lines. So once again, hard to be too bullish on the market when it looks like that. Dow Jones Industrial Average, same similar situation. We don't see anything that you know shows positive divergence in our indicators. So it's really hard for me to get too excited about what I'm seeing overall in this bounce attempt. S&P 500, Russell 2000, NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100, all showcasing the exact same technical analysis patterns. So it's very difficult to get too bullish here. A bounce attempt is underway. Pessimism has gotten extreme in the AAII and Investors Intelligence Survey, but extreme pessimism, a little bit of higher put call ratio, doesn't necessarily convince me that stocks want to rally hard here. And I know everybody's like, oh, well, there was fear in the VIX index. 
I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I have a tough time believing that a 32 top in the VIX is extreme fear whenever back here we hit 50 in the August lows, 53. So until I see us hit 50s again, it's hard to say that that's fearful. And then also, I've been around a while. I remember in 2008 whenever VIX got all the way up to the 80 level right here. So it's kind of hard, you know, to think that we've really bottomed here. And even in, um, 2001 whenever we bottomed here VIX got up to over 56 so it's just not quite something that I would say we're, we're full of fear out there and we just have to rally whenever I see the VIX have a, a kind of kind of spike that it had in August again then I'll say we got some fear in this market however I got to be honest this all looks like orderly selling to me I don't know why I see so many traders on stock twits Twitter and in chat rooms so confident that we've seen the lows I don't know why I think I see so many people that say that we're just gonna keep on selling off another 20 percent if anything we bide our time here and we're gonna be looking to short any bounce attempt into the support or resistance levels here on the NASDAQ NASDAQ 100 SP 500 etc but the volume on this decline Every day is huge on a weekly chart pattern. That's some serious, serious damage. I'm sorry, folks. If you want to be bullish, that's great. Go ahead, but I just don't see it. However, I'm not blind. I'm open-minded. I'll go for a bounce here. I actually still have in both of my accounts 10 long positions. I have two inverse ETFs in my retirement account, and I'm also short two stocks and one ETF. So overall, I'm open-minded and willing to play whatever signal sets up using stop losses. There's been a lot of stop losses, a lot of cut lo losses that have occurred from December to January, but that's why we're trading in small size. I recommend still small position sizes here. There's no 5, 10, 20% of your account capital per signal signal triggering here. So it just, you know, I'm going to continue to pussyfoot around. I've had a couple of long signals, I think, in the past week. Um, neither one have really failed yet, but they're not doing anything either. So, you know, it's just time to be a little cautious. Um, some stocks that do look good, though, just in case we continue to move higher. Wing stop looks great off the lows. I notice Cree is getting some very, very strong support with heavy accumulation on the lows, a pocket pivot point signal yesterday. Also, ODC, not necessarily a bullish stock, a chemical stock. You know, it's not really an innovative growth name, but, you know, it looks pretty good here right above the 50-day moving average. However, a lot of stocks that look good above the 50-day moving average soon afterwards shortly fail. So I'm going to continue to look for stocks off the lows here. SAVE, Spirit Airlines, flagged it yesterday on our website. Today, there was a follow-through, so that's always good to see, but you don't know if it's going to hold or not. SGI, another stock that's had strong accumulation since its gap up of earnings, so everything looks you know decent there. Once again, we'll have to see how that plays out. ADTN is another stock that's uptrending on strong volume, so there are stocks up there, but I just really just gave you a few. If I was showing you 20, 30, 40 names that look like this, oh yeah, it's time to go, time to get long, try to start looking for you know larger long positions per signal, but you know this just isn't the best you know looking you know, setups. The best looking pattern overall is ISRG, Intuitive Surgical. Even though it closed lower than where it opened at 555 and opened at 556, I was considering a possible small poke in this position, but an indicator I do like to use, balance of power, isn't very useful. It's just useful with everything else I gauge in price and volume. It's going the wrong way. BOP should have increased from the day before, giving me higher green level BOP than where it is, so that's not good. But a pocket pivot point signal is good, good price action, but earnings were after the bell. So to become a buy signal, it would need to gap up above the intraday high on 113 at 572. After hours, I think it traded up 2%, but last time I checked, it was only at 557, which means it isn't really responding well to the earnings release. So it's that's the kind of market we're in. So I continue to stress that cash is king for new investors, even for old time professionals. Cash is the smartest investment here. I'm not really looking to really swing it hard on the short side due to all the gapping whenever it finally broke down here. If it would have broke that 200-day moving average without gapping down, we would be heavily short right now. Instead, we only have a few short positions and some inverse ETFs, and we really got caught flat-footed. The good news is we're heavily cash, so this damage this year hasn't really hurt us at all. And before the bounce yesterday, it's actually been was a quite good uh, past few days. But overall, we're looking to short any big bounce. For now, cash is still king. Bounce on lower volume with a failure reversal on heavier volume. 
will short this market hard. But for right now, I'm going to keep take it easy.